think it was wonderful that our company is offering leadership training. You know, if we're going to have leaders and managers, it would be nice to train them, right, how to do those things. And um, it's really, it's been a wonderful time for her and um, can really see the results of her effort. Um, and she asked for a survey of what we thought. <laughs> you know, don't put your name on it, one of those kind of things. Yeah, right. <laughs> be honest and be nice. Wait, which? <laughs> which do you want, honest or nice? Um, but one of the things that it struck me after I wrote it and we were talking about it is I said, um, don't let your attitude or don't let your circumstances dictate your attitude. And I thought that is really hard for people that don't have some sort of a solid foundation. And um, I'm telling that to myself. <laughs> don't let my belief be affected by my circumstances. Don't let my, the, the word that is in my heart, the truth that is in my heart, be affected by my circumstances. And it's just what, you know, Roberto has been talking about for months now. And, you know, there's things that I think that we're believing for. And then there's things that I think that we used to believe for. You know what I mean? Like things that, there's moments when the urgency of our circumstances sort of dictate <laughs> an, an urgency of belief or the battle, you know, the put up your dukes kind of faith, you know? And when things are going great, <laughs> when there aren't those battles to face, sometimes those are the times when, you know, we need to start up, I guess. And um, so I'm asking the Lord to stir up in me um, if I'm feeling like things are great. <laughs> what am I missing? Like where, you know, then fine. Then what, what else can I, what impact can I have on those around me, I guess? Um, the Lord's really been, um, and, and it's funny because at Eastern Gate House of Prayer, um, the Lord told me, open your eyes. Because when I pray or when I'm trying to listen to what the Lord wants to say or when I'm looking for a word or when I'm searching the atmosphere when we're together, I tend to draw into myself because that's where it's easier for me to hear the Lord. That's how I'm used to doing it is just me and him. But that's not how it is when we're out in the world. That's not how it is when we're together. When there's more than one person in the room, I can't close my eyes and say, give me a minute. <laughs> And the Lord said, open your eyes and look around. We're gonna, he wants to bring us to a place when we don't have to take a moment and close our eyes. And um, so I guess that's my prayer is to stir up those gifts, to stir it up to um, passion. You know, I'm thinking I, would, I shared testimony when I, um, you know, when I first got saved. And I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I don't know. There was that place. You know, Darlene talked about it, where you walk above the clouds. And it's not real cloudy right now, but <laughs> I still want to walk in that place, even yeah. when it's sunny. Yeah. And so, you know, I guess, I don't know, I, guess, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm baffled sometimes by why I don't have to stand in line to get in here, to hear the wonderful word that we receive, and, and to be in the powerful presence of God. You know, and I just, I pray that the hunger is stirred up in all of us. And that, um, you know, Amen. that the Lord continues to draw those that need to be part of this body Amen. as he's, it was really, it was really wonderful to network with the kingdom house of prayer and to know that we're not alone in the battle. And, and again, his prayer was a real blessing, um, saying that, you know, we will be in the forefront of what God's doing in this region. And it's because we've been faithful in the little things. <laughs> and, um, I believe that with my whole heart. So. Be encouraged and stir it up, Lord. Stir it up in all of us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, anybody have any prayer requests? Thank you. 
I feel the spirit of rambling. That's exactly right. It's like I can't have a coherent thought from beginning and an end. Stop. Anybody else? Kind of sense? Amy? James? I'd like to ask for prayer for Craig's friend, um, Sterling. I think he's been here before. He's from Indianola. Um, it was his birthday yesterday, and his mom and I have been friends since we were 10, and she moved away a few years ago, and, um, he, and he was staying with his dad, and his dad just divorced his wife and doesn't have room for him in his home. He has dropped out of high school. He's living with his girlfriend. And he told Craig last night that he didn't feel like he had parents and that Craig was so lucky that he had a mom that loved him. And so he's heavy on my heart tonight. So please pray for Sterling. Um, his girlfriend's family is wonderful. They take him in. They're Christians. But now he's living with his girlfriend. <laughs> so at 18 now. He's just 18. He's dropped out of high school. He has a plan like all 18-year-olds do, <laughs> but just pray, pray that God's hand is upon him and that the hurts he's feeling right now don't, don't fester and, and affect his adult life and his future. 
and that God would put a little bit of a smack down on his parents, <laughs> who I think need it severely right now. So. truth will set you free yeah. you know and when you're right you can a relationship with people and trust people but you put your trust only in God yeah. Yeah. that's very yeah. profound truth yeah. alright well let's stand Thank you. 
Minister to the brokenhearted, Lord. Minister to the blind eyes, Lord. Minister to the deaf ears that they might be opened. And that those who need healing are made whole in your presence. Those that need prosperity, Lord, are prospered in your presence. Those that need reconciliation are reconciled in your presence, Lord. Oh, we just thank you. We thank you for your promises that are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. And we amen the amen, our Lord. So be it unto us. As it is in your word, as Mary spoke, as you say, so be it unto us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Speak the word. All right. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Yes, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Disease in German, every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Yes, Lord. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes, Lord. All right, John, you want to come take an offering tonight? Please and thank you.
this world right now to let go of all of those that's holding captive. Right now, in Jesus' name, we declare Hallelujah. that all of those are being free right now, being released by this world. The Lord is calling all of us. He's calling us to come to Him. So right now, call out of all of those that you feel that are being called by this world and tell the world to give them up right now. In Jesus' name. Days go by, earthquake shadows falling from the sky, and yet a new day breaks. There's still another reason why to live. We are the generation. Stand and fight in the midst of all the darkness. We carry the light. We are the generation who stand and fight in the midst of all the darkness. We carry the light. We carry the fail and children hide hearts are broken from the hurts they have inside and yet a new day breaks still another reason why to live we are the children of all the darkness will carry the light will carry the It's a day to stand. Hearts can be mended by the power of God's own hand. And it's a new day now. It's time for the saints to shine. of all the darkness who carry the light. We are the generation who will stand and fight. 
Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. around with a little bit tonight and see what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Let's uh, begin, Roberto, if you will, at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we'll read verses 18 through 24. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 24. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, for the preaching of the gospel, uh, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God, the power of God. Amen. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding. Praise the Lord. And uh, understanding of the prudent. Praise the Lord. Where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jew require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, quickly, let's just go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So praise the Lord. Godliness is uh, often minimized uh, to mean morality. You know, we've talked about it many times, live right. And uh, the truth is, though, godliness is more than morality. It's more than just living right. It's living wisely. So then growing in godliness means growing in wisdom. Um, to use uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark again, <laughs> he said to the guy who drank the, uh, the wrong cup, uh, the grail, 
chosen poorly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not wisely. Amen. So, growing in godliness means growing in wisdom. And just like Jesus did, we should. Let's look at uh, Luke chapter 2 again, verse 52, if we still have it up here. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So it's, it's wisdom. Praise the Lord. If you look at the sequence, it's first wisdom, then stature. Amen? His inner man was developed in wisdom which provoked an outer manifestation of favor with God and with man. Now we're talking about grace. Favor and grace, right? So what is favor? Favor is grace. It's, it's when God providentially orchestrates preferential treatment toward you that you can't earn. Amen? Amen? It's what Suzanne was talking about last week with her increase. We talk about it with healing and everything else. It's There is a wisdom, and the wisdom is him. The wisdom is focusing on him, not what we're doing. We, we just do what we do, but we focus on him. And because of that, God influences us supernaturally. He blesses us. He favors us. Praise the Lord. So look at, let's look at now John chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of behind, excuse me, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, it goes on to say, let, let's just go on down through 4 and 5. You all know this anyway, but we'll just touch it so we don't have to make sense of it. For an angel went down at a, a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the tr uh, troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. So a guy had this thing for 38 years. Now Jesus visits this place called Bethesda. Right? And, it, and according to the scripture, it's full of sick people. Full of people that are infirm. People with all kinds of uh, physical uh, problems. And Jesus just so happens to walk over to a man who's been sick for 38 years. Out of all these people, it's full of people. But 38 years of sickness and disease, and Jesus just somehow stumbles into this one guy. And he asks him if he wants to be healed, if he wants to be made whole. Out of all the people in that place that wanted healing, this one guy received it. Amen? Amen? But it was this one man's wisdom that put him in the position to receive the miracle. We don't often talk about it, but every year this guy pressed his way to this place. And he lay by the pool. He didn't earn the favor. He positioned himself for a miracle. He positioned himself to receive it. He believed something was going to happen. Even though it hadn't happened, he positions himself and all of these other people that are there and the favor comes to him. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Amen? Here's what I'm saying. Favor, 
grace, whichever way you want to call it, they're, they're synonymous terms. They need to be handled with wisdom. Praise, Praise the Lord. That's the only thing I get concerned about, you know, is, you know, we're preaching this all the time. We're talking about it all the time. I think most of us are getting revelation of this. But they're, they're, it needs to be handled with wisdom. Jesus grew in this revelation of grace and favor with God. Amen? So I think it would probably be a good thing for us to. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 7 now, verses 24 through 29. Therefore, whosoever heareth these saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one being authority, one having authority and not as the scribes. Praise the Lord. Now, the whole chapter of of Matthew chapter 7 is about dichotomies. It starts with Jesus laying out key differences between a true prophet and a false prophet. Between a true disciple and a false disciple. Then in verse 24, he talks about two houses. And if you focus and get too hung up on the images of the metaphors of buildings and you know houses and so on and so forth, you're going to miss the point because Jesus is less concerned with the kind of uh, the kind of ideas. Uh, being used or the the actual cost of a house what it costs to build the house or the 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 pavement that's it's built out over the construction prospects you can you can get involved in all of that his his real concern is all to do with the internal foundational parts of these images praise the lord matthew chapter 7 verse 24 Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Right? Mm -hmm. So in one short sentence, Jesus encapsulates the wisdom question. He says this is how it's done. At the same time, he presents two major challenges. First of all, in order to acquire wisdom... You have to be an exceptional hearer. Praise the Lord. That's what Suzanne was talking about earlier. Amen. He doesn't say read more. He doesn't say work more. He doesn't say get richer. He simply says hear and you will be wise. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing is you have to put what you hear into practice. So showing up for the lecture in college doesn't mean you're going to be any smarter than anybody else in the class, right? Right. Setting in a church service, hearing a sermon preached, hearing teaching doesn't make you smart. It doesn't make you guaranteed to have revelation. Amen? When the information is translated into application, Mm -hmm. that's demonstration which brings manifestation. 
And that's what makes us wise builders, hearing and doing, not hearing and saying. Because we hear people all the time, please forgive me if I'm struggling here with seeing, but I, I don't know if it was the, the stuff I was smelling at my daughter's, <laughs> but I got some really weird stuff going on right now in my head. I can't hardly see right, and I've got this really weird, like the old came on while I was down there and I got really weird so I'm having trouble keeping my head together here so just help me out here praise the Lord but we've got we have people all the time we have had people that have been here and gone on we have some that you know they hear the word Mm -hmm. and simply by hearing it then they'll say come on we've heard that before but they haven't got revelation they haven't changed they haven't done anything any differently they'll say things But saying doesn't mean anything. You can say anything. It's the change is what God's interested in. He's wanting us not only to hear. It's not enough to hear. He wants us to act on what it is we hear. Praise the Lord. Now, in order to hear what needs to be heard, we have to be in a position to receive it. Jesus is trying to speak wisdom into our lives in all kinds of ways. This goes to what Suzanne was saying. He wants you to hear it from me. He wants you to hear it from one another when we testify. He wants it to hear from your family. He wants to hear from billboards when you're driving down the road. He can talk to you in any way. He wants to talk to you through strangers. He wants to speak to you in any circumstance, any situation, not just as Suzanne said, not just when we are totally just focused on the inner voice of God, but in everything that we're doing all the time, job, anything. God can talk to us at any time. So he wants us to be aware, to be conscious, to be listening, amen, as he speaks. Even unbelievers can speak truth out of their own stupidity. I mean, we can hear things from people and we go, whoa, that was really deep, and they don't even know what they said. But it's transformational to us, amen, because we're hearing the Lord speak to them. So being in the right place at the right time with the right uh, posture, position matters. Mm -hmm. Amen? So the devil doesn't have to make you bad. He just needs to keep you busy. Praise the Lord. He, he, He wants to waste your time with things you really don't need to do. Praise the Lord. If he can't... If he can't stop your zeal, you know, right. if he can't keep you from being zealous, as, as what we were saying, right. then he'll attack your focus. Right. Right. So we don't make listening to God a priority. Mm-hmm. Too often, it becomes just another thing. It's just something else that, oh yeah, as, as was already said, if we have a, see there's, there are There are general beliefs in terms of grace and mercy, salvation, being born again. But there are specific things. Right. And when it's a specific thing, we'll, we'll zero in and focus and just bear down. But there's all kinds of things that are happening that are not necessarily specific, but they're just as important. They may be general things, but they're because it's not specific for us in the moment. Right. But it's still very important, and we need to position ourselves so that we can hear God, so that we can listen and hear what it is the Lord is saying. Amen? So look at Luke chapter 10, and we'll read verses 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much, about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? 
Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Mm -hmm. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Praise the Lord. So, Martha distracts. Mary positioned. So who, who is representing wisdom here? Jesus said Mary had chosen the better thing. So Martha is busy, but she's distracted. She's just scattered. She's doing all kinds of stuff, and what she's doing, there's nothing wrong with anything that she's doing. It's just not the right thing. She's just busy, 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 and she thinks she's doing it for the Lord, but she's not hearing anything that the Lord is saying. Mary is the better one because she's positioned herself to hear from the Lord. Right? Right. It's not just being in the right position. Uh, it's, It's not just the right place at the right time. Because Mary and Martha are in the same house that Jesus is in at the same time. So it's not just a question of being in the in a place, right? right? The problem is only one of them is listening. Mm-hmm. They're both there, but only one listens. Right. We've got to be in the right mental space as well. You have people that come to church, and they're in the same building with everybody else. Right. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're hearing anything. They're only hearing what they want to hear, or they're only hearing what they're focusing on. They're coming and going. They're in the same place. I mean, it happens all the time. You, you have people here that are testifying, and, and people stand there looking, you know, like a cow staring at a <laughs> new gate, you know, like the old saying. And you think, geez, they, they ought to get it because it's, it's the Lord. But they don't. There's people that do it. There's people here that just don't get it. In the same location, same place, but hearing something totally different than what others are hearing the Lord speak. Amen? Amen. Wisdom is the recognition that I don't have to be everywhere to make my presence known. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? Not just talking about me, but speaking of me in in particular, I will. But I'm also saying this is true of every one of you. Wisdom is that you don't have to be everywhere. You just need to be in the right place. You don't need to have to be everywhere, run in circles, trying to take care of this thing, take care of that thing. If you're being led by the Spirit, you can influence others that will influence as if you were there. Right? Right? You You can have a greater influence by just the way you influence other people, instead of you trying to go and do everything yourself, you can pour that out. Look, Jesus, uh, he couldn't be, uh, you know, at at every wedding. But the one he was in changed everything. He didn't have to be uh, visiting someone in the hospital every time there was somebody in the hospital. There were times when he specifically sent the disciples to go and do things They had the power to do it. They just needed to go and do it. And sometimes we get the idea that, oh, well, it's only going to be the pastor who does this or only a certain person who, you know, who gives a testimony. No, everybody has this ability. We all are kings and priests. And we, you know, instead of that, we've got 10% trying to do everything, running in circles and can't do everything the way it needs to be done when we've got plenty of people. I mean, we've got enough people, just even with the small numbers that we have, to have an influence if everybody would just do what everybody's capable of doing instead of expecting two or three people to do everything. Amen? Jesus was wise enough to know he couldn't be everywhere. He couldn't be at all places at all times. But wherever he went, he influenced. He changed things. He listened. He heard the Lord. 
He was listening to the Father all the time. That's what he said. I only do what I hear my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. I only do what I see my Father do. And it's not me. It's the Father that's in me. He does the works. Amen. You want favor? Focus on the Lord. Listen and just do what he tells you to do. Amen. And don't worry about the rest of it. Yep. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look what Jesus says about the, the wise building. He says the wise man hears his saying. He doesn't hear every saying. He prioritizes God's saying. Yes. Amen? Amen? He listens to what God's word over everything that people say. Instead of listening, in other words, I'm saying, there's plenty to listen to. There's all kinds of people talking. There's all kinds of things being spoken. But he didn't listen to everything. He just listened to the Lord. He just listened to what the word of God was saying. So I'm saying this. You'll hear all sorts of things that are wise or in terms of the world, the the way the world is uh, defined. Mm -hmm. We know that he says the wisdom of the world is foolishness, but it's still, there's wisdom as far as the world is concerned. So there's all kinds of things being said that sound wise, that sound intelligent, that sounds powerful. But there's only one thing that brings favor, and that's listening to what God says. That brings about favor. That brings about grace. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? They looked, listened to Jesus, and they said, nobody has ever talked the way this guy talks. It's incredible, right? No, no, no formal education. Amen. No, no. I mean, he just had the the same kind of teaching as far as the rabbis and that were concerned that any other Jewish kid would have gotten. Minimal. Yep. And yet he had this wisdom that the the religious people could not argue against. It, it was confounding to them. Amen? So, look, look at Psalms chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But this delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His life also shall not wither. His leaf, excuse me, his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Amen. So whatever a wise person does is going to prosper. Not what they intend to do. Amen. Not what they meant to do but what they do. Whatever you do, amen, that is in agreement with the word of God, it will prosper. It has to prosper. It won't prosper by you talking about it, just talking about it. It won't won't prosper simply because you know about it. It, You prosper when you do it. When you do what the word says. Now compare that with Matthew chapter 7. Whatever you do, should be secured on the rock. Talking about the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. Christ is the rock. He is is the finished work. Mm -hmm. He is the unchanging truth. Praise the Lord. The the rains will come. The winds will blow. It will try to beat you down. It will try to beat against you. It will try to knock your house down. Praise the Lord. Natural elements of life will come. They'll come regardless of what your foundation is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a, a foolish belief to think that simply because I believe God, 
that I'm focused on God, that there won't be storms come, that there won't be floods, that there won't be storms. Amen? It comes against everybody. We live in a world, a, a fallen world. Amen? We live in a world that is, is uh, ruled by the enemy. Praise the Lord. So th those things are going to happen. Winds are going to blow. Floods are going to come. They're going to come and try to knock you off your feet. Natural elements of life, regardless of your foundation. It's just a metaphor for stuff. Stuff is going to happen. Stuff is going to try to mess you up. And being wise doesn't exempt you from experience. It, it does keep your house from sinking. The storms will come. But your house won't be sunk. Amen. You will be challenged. But you will overcome. If, if we think that what happens so often uh, in the Christian world is we will say things like, well, you know, uh, we're just going to believe God. And because we confess this or that or whatever, then nothing, you know, nothing's going to come our way. That's just not true. Stuff will come your way. But if you stay focused on Jesus, you will overcome whatever it is that comes Hallelujah. against you. Hallelujah. Amen? What happens is people who are not really positioning themselves to hear from the Lord, they're not focusing on the Lord. So when stuff comes, not only does stuff come, but it knocks them for a loop. Mm -hmm. And they think, well, then you can't trust God or that God isn't on my side or that God doesn't love me. No, there, there, there is a way that God moves in our lives and it's through favor. Mm -hmm. But you have to use enough wisdom to understand how favor and grace works in a person's life. You have to stay focused on Jesus. It won't happen any other way. If your house is built on sand, you're unstable. Mm -hmm. You're insecure. You're tenity. You're paranoid. Amen? But wisdom promises a house that will always be intact. It will always be secure. It will always be stable. It will always be sure. It will be unsinkable. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do anything, but I can do all things through Christ. Amen? That is... Grace in Christ. Yeah. That's God's favor through wisdom. Thank you, Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. now, I have no idea what I've just said. Hopefully you heard more than I said. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.